In this uh, week's edition, we are shining a light on African fashion and how they are making their mark on the world stage. Hello, I am Paul Ndiho. Bi-weekly, we strive to bring you stories that inspire, empower, engage, and motivate young emerging African entrepreneurs using innovative brilliance as well as technology into action. Africa has been getting a lot of attention lately in the fashion world, and for a good reason. Young talent is entering the game with something totally unique. U.S.-based Nigerian born designer Vivian Abakoba launched her clothing line Anya by Vivian in 2013. And since then, she has steered quite a buzz on the Washington fashion scene. China designer Vivian Abakoba has always been a fashion fanatic. By the age of 11, she started to experiment with beautiful fabrics and taught herself the art of designing clothes. Today, she is the founder yeah, and like artistic director of her own label, Jesus. Anya by guess, Vivian, um, derived from her media like name, Anya, that. which in the Igbo language means eyes or vision. For me, beauty is in everyone. I see beauty in every woman, in every man, and a lot of times that's what inspires me. Abakoba's creative designs blend a mix of vibrant African prints and high-quality fabrics are produced by the Velisco brand to create a dazzling array of outfits. When I see the fabric, um, I try to figure out which one would work with the concept I have. But sometimes I'm also inspired by these beautiful prints that I see. They are so vibrant and colorful. Vivian Abakoba has participated in several fashion shows, showcasing innovative, unique and cutting-edge fashion designs and wants to make a difference in the diaspora. Taylor Nkencha, one of Vivian's clients, says she manages to maintain the eccentric romantic feel of the garment. This is a fabulous dress that I'm wearing by Anya by Vivian. Um, very sophisticated. Um, I've actually worn it to um, a dinner with my husband. And it was just unbelievable. Nina Oranusi, another client, says that the day she wore this outfit, people were blown away because of its uniqueness. Her tailoring is neat. The threading is neat. Everything's in details. The cutting, the layout, everything is just placed together. And that's what I like about what she does. Oman Gwabia notes that her Vivian's ability to design with a variety of prints has given her a limitless opportunity to continue to unleash her creativity and grow her client base. She goes for good quality fashion and she believes in fashion, um, in, you know, like using fashion to bring out the best in people. Abakoba attributes her success to her parents who pushed her to pursue her dream in the fashion industry. My dad, who was a, was a professor, um, he did kind of see that I had this gift. My mom encouraged it by allowing me to use her machines and leftover fabrics that she worked with, and she taught me a few of the stuff that I knew. But my dad was exceptionally very supportive. Phil Russell, a manager at Sona African Textiles, says Vivian has tremendous potential to meet the growing demand for high-end products in the global market, including Africa's growing middle class. She typically buys the Velisco. Uh -huh. um, she, they have wax block, super wax, Java, uh, and the way I would differentiate those three products mm -hmm. is typically, uh, if you think of um, bedding, you know, thread count, mm -hmm. you know, the higher the thread count, the better the quality. As the Anya by Vivian's label expands and makes its marker in the fashion world, Abakoba says uh, she will play a significant role in inspiring the next generation of young designers. Since then, Miss Abakoba has showcased her clothing line at the New York Fashion Week. Still in West Africa, Nigerian fashion designer Sidi Ahmed Al-Fadi, known as the Al-Fadi, is arguably the first African artist to make it onto catwalks in Paris, New York, Milan, and beyond. 
Alfadi's designs are characterized by elegant, clean tailoring, classic uh, structures, and neutral tones. Born in Timbuktu, Mali in 1957, Alfadi has been described as the magician of the desert. He is recognized in the fashion industry as one of the greatest names in fashion on the African continent. His creations are combined cutting edge and traditional African styles. Alfadi brand is like a hot couture brand. Alfadi brand is a brand uh, who were who are wearing by the big and uh, big ladies and the big women in the world. Uh, uh, Alfadi brand is like uh, uh, like uh, we can't talk about Saint Laurent to talk about Dana Karen to talk about the big design from Europe. Alfadi is like them. Alfadi started his label in 1984. Since then, he has been featured in top fashion magazines as a pioneer designer and entrepreneur on a mission to promote high-end African fashion. For the brand is like uh, the 35 years this brand promote African textile, promote African jewelry, promote African names, and promote African beauty. That is Alfadi brand. In 1989, Alfadi launched the first international festival for African fashion, FEMA, in the Tegita Desert in Niger, under the auspices of UNESCO. The festival has since become a place of exchange and dialogue between cultures from all over the world. If they can study fashion in my industry in Niger, and I'm going to build one of Africa's big universities of fashion, I'm going to do it in Niger. We're beginning to do this, industry, this, uh, uh, this school, mm. big school like University of Fashion and Arts, mm. and that is in Niger. And the artist has also created the Al-Fadi Foundation, which works to improve the lives of women and children in the Sahara Desert and builds and empowers women in the region and his team is currently working on establishing a university to teach fashion design to address the growing demand for high-end fashion on the continent for me it's very important to make and to show beauty in africa uh, the beauty is not only because you have money only you can wear it beauty is because you have the personality for that. You can do, you can, and Africa, this is my competition also for the world. African is beautiful, African is nice. We have nice and, uh, and beautiful and handsome guys, and they can wear, we have not, not nice models for, uh, for, to the world. That is black people can do, and me, my work is also for that. Mm. Earlier this year, UNESCO designated Al-Fadi as an ambassador for PISA for his commitment to culture and development promotion of tolerance and his dedication to the ideals of the organization. The celebrity designer is now a UNESCO artist for peace and is using his label to promote peace in the world. Still to come on the Africa Innovation and Technology Channel, a new breed of young fashion designers are staking their claim on the international stage. We'll take a short break, but before we go, we want to know what you think about the Africa Innovation and Technology Channel and the stories we cover. Follow us or watch us live on Facebook and Twitter. The address is Africa Innovations and Technology. And you can also check us out on our YouTube channel. Welcome back to the Africa Innovation and Technology Channel, a show where we strive to bring you stories that inspire, empower, engage, and motivate young emerging African entrepreneurs using innovative brilliance as well as technology into action. Today, we are talking about African fashion designers and what makes them tick. Fashion analysts say fashion from Africa is as diverse as fashion from other continents and cannot be branded any longer. Togolese fashion designer Linina Kojo has always been a fashion fanatic. Today she owns her own boutique and label, Ajo Asika. 
her use of African prints has made her one of Africa's uh, top designers, uh, selling fashionable clothing, accessories, and home decor. Linina Kojo started doing jewelry and other accessories when she was a student in neighboring Ivory Coast. Now she has turned her passion into a business, launching her clothing label, Ajo Asika, meaning casual wear in her local dialect. Since then, she has created quite a buzz on the global fashion scene. I make clothing and accessories. Mm -hmm. um, I do uh, a little uh, series of uh, um, items inspired mm -hmm. by the African culture. Okay. Uh, I specialize in uh, working with the African prints, mm -hmm. uh, the wax fabric, mm -hmm. and uh, all those... Um, material that reminds of Africa. Kojo has participated in several fashion shows uh, showcasing uh, innovative, uh, unique and cutting edge uh, fashion designs. Recently here in Washington, uh, she was part of the African uh, Women's Entrepreneurship Program, a U.S. Uh, Department of State uh, initiative that identifies and builds uh, networks uh, of women entrepreneurs across Sub-Saharan Africa that are poised to transform their societies by owning and operating small and medium businesses. The program also promotes business growth to U.S. markets through the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act, AGOA. I started designing all the things that I cannot do by myself, like bags and clothes, uh, so I can make them part I can make the people I work with part of this. So uh, that's it. Then I, from the jewelry, I started making bags for women, for men. Um, and then I started doing clothing to match with the, mm -hmm. the, the bags. And, uh, and that's it. Uh, My brand name is Ajoa Sika Namau. Uh, Ajoa Sika is a um, uh, sure name in my country. Uh, Ajo uh, actually is the name of the girls uh, born on Monday. Okay. I, I'm born on Monday. Okay, cool. So uh, this is my African sure name. Okay. Miss Kojo is part of the next generation of African entrepreneurs who are trying to make a difference in their communities and by becoming a voices for social advocacy in their communities. Here we learn a lot about how to improve our, our skills being a businesswoman mm -hmm. uh, in our country is very important because uh, we need uh, this kind of uh, help to uh, empower women. Kojo's fascination with fashion and love for raw African prints started when she was a young girl. And now she competes with some of the biggest names in the West African fashion industry. Lenina Kojo attributes her accomplishment to her clients and supporters. We want to tell our stories and through our items, through our creativity. So uh, this is the way to, uh, to have new customers, new people to talk to uh, so that we can have... Uh, more opportunities for our community also back. Uh, people have uh, more and more eyes turned uh, to Africa. So this is a great opportunity for us uh, to, um, to, to say how things are going forward. Jo Asika collections are known for their uniqueness. Her handmade accessories such as handbags, brochures, laptop bags, shoes and other accessories with African prints are transformed into stylish pieces. Kojo's creations have tremendous potential to meet the growing demand for high-end products in the global market including Africa's rising middle class. Ghanaian fashion designer Mabel Simpson is the founder and creative director of her own label, M. Sims. Her designs approve uh, the notion that uh, when clothing is designed well, it's easy to wear. M. Simpson uh, pieces are characterized by soft skated clean couture made for those who want to stand out. Mabel Simpson uh, resigned her office job in 2010 to launch her own label M. Sims. 
since then as she has created quite a buzz on the global fashion scene. She has participated in several fashion shows that showcasing innovative, unique and cutting-edge fashion designs. Imagine giving this to your wife or your sister or your mom. I'm sure she'll be excited. Miss Mabel Simpson is part of the next generation of African entrepreneurs who are trying to make a difference in their communities. Simpson's fascination with fashion and her love for raw African prints started when she was a young girl. And now she competes with some of the biggest names in the African fashion industry. We started um, very little. I started um, the M. Sims brand with um, $100. I purchased um, a few raw materials and then I brought my grandmother's sewing machine. This was a machine that was about 53 years old because it was when she was going to marry um, her husband that, you know, and in the Ghanaian tradition, when a lady is going to marry, you are supposed to add um, a sewing machine as part of her bride price, you know. So that was the machine that I brought from her because she wasn't using it. She says her goal of M. Sims is to produce quality handmade products are with African prints made in Ghana. For me, um, starting MSIMS, it was about um, making or manufacturing quality made in Ghana products to ensure that it could meet international standards so we could sell on the global market as well. My clients include individuals who want to project Ghana on the global market, individuals who still believe in Ghana and who, who believe in Africa. Fashion analysts say MSIMS collections are known for their uniqueness. Here, M. Simpson manufactures handmade accessories such as handbags, laptop bags, shoes, and other accessories with African prints transformed into stylish pieces. Despite her success, running a startup in Ghana has its own challenges. For example, most people go for more than 24 hours without power, and they have to rely on expensive generators. It's a huge problem because um, for us, um, every week, we spend about 350 to 400 Ghana cities just on fuel. It drains you financially, but um, that's why I said that sometimes, even when there's no light at the end of the tunnel, you need to see the light. Fashion experts said that uh, the industry has tremendous potential to meet uh, the growing demand for high-end products in the global market including Africa's growing middle class. Simpson says that her young African designers can play a significant role on the continent through entrepreneurship. It grows the economy and if you want to be an entrepreneur, I would say that start small and then grow. You don't, and when you're growing or when you start, don't let money be your focus because if you let money be your focus, you're going to fail. You need to sacrifice and make sure that you build the business. Make sure that it's a brand that you're building. As uh, the M. Simpson label becomes more popular and expands, other young African designers are also looking forward to expressing their creativity in the marketplace. Apart from using traditional African fabrics, uh, these designers have also gone ahead to experiment and create beautiful designs using fabrics from other parts of the world. Well, on that note, do you think you have a better idea or you have created something that everyone is talking about and you'd like to be featured on this show? Please send us your video clips and tell us which country you're from and how your invention is impacting your community. Thanks for watching. Until next time, so long from Washington.